Hi folks, uh, in this tutorial chapter, I will discuss all the remaining um, setting options. So software updates, download test, diagnostics, remote access, reset factory defaults, and restart. So let's start with software update. Uh, we recommend you leave software updates on so that anytime there's a new software update, you'll be notified and you can decide whether you want to uh, install it. You can go check for updates and the box goes and checks for updates and it tells you, uh, oh, there's a software update available, great. So let's me go, let me go install it, let's see what happens. Uh, preparing, do not unplug or power down. I know that right now I'm running uh, 2.7 engineering release five uh, it has not been released right now. This is internal testing version, but uh, we're downloading update files, preparing to install update files, and boom, it restarts the application. And we should have, um, we're back to watching video. Oh, well so the audio turns back on, so I'm gonna to mute it. If your box restarts, the audio gets uh, unmuted automatically. So that's a dead giveaway. If um, uh, I make sure I'll turn my TV off at night in case there's a reboot, then there's no blaring sound. But uh, let's go to menu and go to about device info. And I went from 2.7 engineering five to 2.7 engineering six release. So um, that's um, uh, an internal internal release and um, I'm also running OS version 0506 that's not a version that's been released um, out to the general public this is my device ID I have two tuners uh, secure content or encrypted content is enabled my guide subscri subscription is lifetime and all the other component release IDs my serial number, my wired Mac ID Ethernet, my Wi-Fi uh, IP address, my Wi-Fi, um, my Wi-Fi Mac ID. So um, this is the about, and while I'm at it, there are some copyright notices, acknowledgements, mainly for Dolby, our privacy policy, and our FCC ID. So let's go back to settings. That was kind of. Um, nice that I was able to, uh, at, it so happened I was able to show a software update. Now, um, in this update that we saw, we only downloaded the Zapperbox application, which is around, I forget, but it's only a um, few megabytes. It's not, it's not, the, the actual Android OS is about one gigabytes. So um, it's pretty large and that takes on my box, it takes about, I would say five minutes to download and install uh, a new Android release. But as you saw the um, software application, the Zapperbox application only takes like uh, 15 to 30 seconds. So that's the software update. Uh, download test, now um, you can, you know, this is handy if you want to make sure that your box is connected to the internet. I start my test. It first uh, makes sure it can reach the router, whether it can reach our server. This is not a speed test. This is reaching out to the Zapperbox server. It's downloading a file of a known size and it's trying to see what's the speed, not your internet speed, because a lot of people say, oh, I have 500 megabit internet and you're only showing a much lower speed. No, this is reaching out to the Zapperbox server and right now it's showing a pretty low speed. Typically, uh, I see about 38 megabits, but right now I'm seeing about 10 megabits. So it could be my home Wi-Fi or something else is off. And I can, uh, the test finished and you get three green check marks, which means everything's good. Um, now, the next option is called Diagnostics. This is pretty cool. I can upload logs from my 
uh, my zapper box to the to our server I click on upload logs it says continue now what what it's saying is select continue to upload diagnostic logs in the background you can continue watching TV while the logs are uploaded no further action is required it typically takes about two or three minutes to upload logs the logs tend to be uh, I think uh, a few megabytes. I, I think 100 megabytes at the most, but uh, I, I'm not sure. But I hit continue and the logs are gone. They'll be uploaded. Uh, it says, thank you, your logs have been uploaded. Now this message um, is printed, but um, it doesn't really wait for the complete upload to finish. Uh, however, within, I would say, a minute, we have the logs. And if we if we are if you're on the support line and you're talking to us we need to know your device id in order to find your logs so because we get people upload logs all the time there are thousands of them and we can't just find your log unless we know your device id so for your device id once again you go to about device info and right here is your device id and if you see the device ID is the same as your Mac ID. ACDBD is 645029, 645029. Um, and a lot of times on the support um, line, I, I ask people to send me a picture of the screen or a picture of their channel scan that shows the device ID or a picture of if I go into Zap and I turn on the signal meter, even here, the device ID is shown. That lets me uh, find your Zapper box and figure out uh, a bunch of stuff about it. Uh, I'm gonna turn this off. I'm gonna go turn off the Zap menu, go into settings. So we looked at uh, diagnostic logs remote access is kind of cool I can and it's enabled by the way I can disable it but if I enable it I get a warning and it says enabling remote access allows a technician to establish a secure connection to your device for troubleshooting uh, when a connection is established we will you will be notified on your TV screen so if we um, access your zapper box there will be a message up, um, I believe, over here that will say remote access active. So um, that's if we can, if we want to dial into your box. And um, once we do that, we can control your, control your Zapper box. We can uh, download your logs, but most importantly, we can tune to a channel that's giving you problems. We can record all the data coming from the antenna on that channel, not just one particular program, but the entire RF band. We can capture all the data. We can download it to our uh, server. We can then analyze it and figure out what's going wrong. Why is something behaving the way it is? So it's a really handy feature. Um, Reset factory defaults, oops. Um, it resets uh, all settings, including channel list. It does not restore the software on the box to what was shipped. The software version stays the same. Uh, in fact, we have upcoming FAQ we'll add to our uh, website that explains everything that happens when you uh, reset factory defaults. A lot of customers, uh, if something is going wrong, they try to reset to factory defaults and typically um, that does not solve anything. Um, um, it, it mainly erases your channel list, uh, but an FAQ is coming about more details on this. And finally, the last option to restart your box um, you know, if you don't want to pull the power and you want to do a restart, um, that does it. And uh, if you do that, you can confirm it, yes or no, and 
the box restarts. Uh, so that's the last chapter of the settings um, menu. And uh, thank you for watching and thank you for your support.